Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warren here today. We're gonna do something different and teach you about Pixie.js. It is a library, more like a framework, that allows you to be very creative in the web browser. On top of Canvas, you can do anything. Those raw pixels and even half pixels where you kind of go and float values for numbers to make things really smooth. You can draw anything. You are not confined by CSS, rules around buttons or functionality across browser. The canvas literally is your canvas. You can draw anything you want, be very creative. You can do animation. When you incorporate other types of media such as sound and video, really, really off kilter components or UIs that no, don't necessarily follow guidelines, you can really break ground in creating really powerful messages and really just having a nice, fun, creative outlet. It's not just for games. You can really do a lot of informational things. You can do some fantastic data visualization. But the gateway to doing that really is Pixie. It helps you out a lot from getting solid objects that you can move around and treat as objects, but the engine handles flattening into flat squares and pixels for you. And doing that in a hardware accelerated array, so it's very fast, very smooth animation. So we're gonna give you a crash course in the basics of user events, setting it up, and doing some simple animations on an object with a basic texture. And that should get you started, get moving. Now, if you've ever seen Pixie.js, if you go online, it's on version four, search for it in Google. If you go to the Pixie.js gallery, there's two that I really think help illustrate some of the more creative things that you can do with it. If you scroll to the bottom, I really like this Rainforest Foods, this organic superfoods. It does load, it is gorgeous. It is not just cliche parallax. It allows you to kind of explore this nature environment with an interactive menu over here. You can click, you wanna go back, I'm gonna click experience. And so we can travel through this thing and it changes. I love when the birds go down though. So you go to the clouds, watch this, the overhead view, and you see these like parrots down there, like under the trees. So they, they created this kind of really immersive way to sell these drinks, uh, food drinks. And I just think it's quite, quite gorgeous, really, really calming, but also beautiful. And you can hear my fan kicking up as well. <laughs> so it really is the hardware. The other one I like is the drawings by Frederick William. It's a very interesting and subtle way to show the drawings in kind of a word or time association. So if we hide this menu here, you can roll over the words and see what words were used or concepts in those particular drawings. So as I roll over, you'll see that they'll hover those particular data points. And this isn't some generic E3 graph. It's a really well thought out art piece that's interactive. And it's just absolutely gorgeous and very fast and very smooth, feels well put together. So if I go down here and let's say click a particular drawing, if it is loaded, we can actually see it. So a lot of these JPEGs still have to download. But if you click on one, it's smart enough to load that particular one. So we're going to start from scratch. Before we do that, let's go ahead and create some assets. So we'll go to Sketch under Templates, click Material Design. I already have the font so that it needs installed, which you can download for free. Zoom in on this big old document of all my favorite components. We're going to grab this simple button here, create a new document, paste it in, go to make exportable, and we're going to export this as an image that we want to play with. So we'll go into our documents, fun with Pixie, and export our button ping. So we'll hit save, it automatically add the ping extension. And now we can see we have a button ping here, open it up, that's what it looks like. Do our npm init y to get a default package and we're going to install two things for development we're going to install pixie so npm install pixie.js or .js slash save and then for development we'll npm install browser sync browser sync and then sit dash dash save dev we'll go in our package json and add a couple things here we're not worried about test but we want to add a start with browser sync so we can start this and as we save our file it'll automatically refresh our browser for us so we'll say browser sync start, we'll make it act as a server, and the files we care about to watch are anything.js. To do that, we have to have an HTML file for it to run. So let's go ahead and create a simple one. File new, paste in and save as index.html. And what this has is a script file directly to the pixie.js and node modules and our code, which is index.js. So let's go ahead and make our script is index.js, hit save, run npm start. That'll load browser sync, and you can see we have nothing in here at localhost 3000, nothing's going down. First thing is we need our const log equals console log. We won't do a lot of logging today, more visual. So we gotta get an application. Now Pixie handles a lot of defaults for you, so you don't always have to configure everything. 
By doing this, we've already got an 800 by 600, I think, <laughs> screen that attempts to be hardware accelerated. So there's a lot of options you can put in here. We're not going to worry about that. Our document.body, we're going to go ahead and append the app.view. So this is automatically going to create a canvas tag for us, and we're going to add it to the document of our web page. So let's get our button. Our button is a pixie sprite. That's a thing that you can not only see, but interact with. There's other things like textures, which are just images, but sprites can be interactive. They don't have to be, but they can. And we'll load it from our button ping. So that will load this button ping into a sprite. And now it's a hardware accelerated button that you can click on. But we have to do two things. We have to say it's interactive. So it's allowed to get click events, touch events, things like that. And we also have to say the button mode is true to handle some of the intricacies of mouse and touch. Now we're going to drag it later. So I'm going to put the anchor point. So if you were to spin it, it would actually be inside the middle. We'll say anchor set to the middle. When you add things to the stage or the canvas, it always adds it up here. So what we're going to do is default it to 100 and 100. So you'll kind of see it in the middle. And the last thing is we need to add it to the stage. If you want to see things, you have to add them to the stage. You can create buttons to your heart's content, but until you actually add them to the stage, they won't be drawn. So you can see it's reloaded a browser a couple times. We'll click there and lo and behold, you have a background of a black canvas by default. And our button is at about 100 by 100. And you can see it's got a little pointer. So that lets you know it's interactive. Let's go ahead and add a click handler just to say, hey, can I click on this thing? Say on pointer down, that handles touches and click events with your mouse. So we'll log you. Go back to our browser, click, click, click. And you can see it's printing out down here in our console. Hope that's helpful. Again, my name is Jesse Warden. You got any other questions? Hit me up in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I really, really appreciate it. If you got any other ideas about what you'd like to see, let me know and I'll see y'all tomorrow.